campground. Show them around. Uh, it's a pretty nice uh, campground right here on the Talladega National Forest. Okay, we're going to start getting camp set up. We're going to film it. And there's Gracie enjoying herself. All right. So, guys, if you would just sit right over here, we'll go ahead and get the camp set up. And then uh, you can join us around the fire. Maybe have a cup of coffee with us here shortly. Water's over there, baby. So we're basically using the bed of the truck. And we're going to put the air mattress down in the bed of the truck. And that's how we're going to sleep tonight. We put the canopy over it because there's rain or anything. I'll have debris fall from the trees. And the tent's going up on that side of it. Check it out, big girl. It comes in tractor supply, but look, it's a little rain jacket, windbreaker. Show. That's Jay's show. That's my attitude. All right, so we pretty much have ourselves set up. Yep. And uh, didn't take long at all, really. Getting a little cloudy, windy. I don't know if it's gonna rain. Uh, I guess we'll turn this off. We're gonna check the weather. And then I'm gonna make a really simple chili for us tonight. It's just the recipe on the McCormick chili pack. Uh, I'm doing that because it's super simple and I see a lot of guys out there like Jasco. And um, you know, shout out to you, Jasco. Uh, but I see guys eating these dehydrated meals. What we're gonna fix tonight is real simple and especially in that van you have, you could make this real quick. Again, camp set up. Coffee's just about done. Uh, and our chili is just about done too. Let's go ahead and check this. And again, this is the McCormick chili seasoning recipe, which is just one pound of hamburger, one can of diced tomatoes, or like two cans of tomato sauce, and one can of chili beans. And as you can see, this is nearly done. We're gonna save it this. So here, you guys go ahead and fix yourself some and then we'll get some too. I'm hungry. Just so you're not hangry. Not yet. Well then we beat that. There you go, baby. Here's some cheese. If you please. So, camp chili. Yeah, camera's faced on the pot. That worked. But, 
But yeah, they got theirs. I figured now we'll get ours. All right, guys, we all gonna sit down to eat. We'll be back. Guys, I hope you liked the first part of the video where we come into the campsite during the day. We set up camp. Uh, we made some real uh, simple chili, had that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did something we don't normally do. We turned the cameras off for about two hours to let it get dark and just kind of sat down and enjoyed ourselves for a minute. Right. And like I said, that's not something we normally do or take a chance to, but uh, it was just so really, so nice here. Mm -hmm. I mean, ever since we checked into this place, it has been just wonderful. Uh, and then when I told the owner, you know, I was talking to her and she, I told her, she's like, and this is the second time I was asked this this week. So she said, are you going to do an alone challenge in the woods? And after being asked the second time this week, okay, guys, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this camera set up. I'm going to go in the woods for 30 minutes and, and then I'm going to come back out. And while Jennifer's in the woods, I'm going to sit here and uh, I'm going to go over just some ghost stories that, that uh, are in the area. Talking about and, this place. Right. We're going to give an overview. I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the ghost stories that are in. Because Talladega Forest is one of the most haunted forests in the southeast. Yes. Just have to tell you that right up. This is one of the most haunted forests in the southeast. They call uh, it the Skinwalker Ranch of the South. Guys. There you go. That's what it was. I was trying to think of that. I mean, it's got tied with that because of the number of sightings, of unexplained sightings that they've seen. They've seen everything from orbs to Bigfoot to the Wampus Cat. I mean, Jay will go over some of the stories while I'm walking. And then when, he, when I get back and he goes, then I'll go over some of the stories. So we'll talk to you while the other one is walking through these dark woods. And I want y'all to remember while they're telling you the story, the other one is in the woods alone. Okay. And we're not communicating with each other. We're literally in the woods alone. Okay. So I'm going out in the woods alone tonight and he's going out. In the woods uh, and alone. we're, I mean, we're probably going to be up most of the night. Yeah. Um, Cause uh, when we're done with our, our individual uh, walk through the woods, there's another trail that goes right in front of us on up uh, over this ridge. And we're just going to take that together, probably take a REM pod with us, uh, just try and do some of that. Then we're going to come back to camp, kind of sitting around the fire talking to ghosts. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing um, tonight. But but I want to I do want to touch back on, you know, that when we checked in, I, I'm horrible with names. I can't remember their names. I don't remember their names. But I'm going to tell you, these folks... When we checked in, they, they met, I think it was Ellen was the girl. I don't know. But when we checked in, it was wonderful. They brought us down, showed us the campsite. I cut a bunch of wood at home, forgot it. And um, what's really convenient is they have an online store. And you go online, you make your purchases, and then they bring it on down to the campsite to you. I mean, I've not seen that anywhere else. All right. So that was really exciting. Um, and they were excited that we were filming. They were excited that we were walking around the forest. They even told us about something later. We'll, we're going to get into that. Um, but we're going to be filming in the forest for about a month. So we'll have time to get into stuff. And But tonight, our main goal is just to do an alone challenge in these woods. And after y'all hear the stories and understand what we're doing, you'll understand why it's taking a little bit of nerve to do that. Because I don't know anybody out here that's going to go in the woods alone. That's going to stay out there in the woods lawn and just see if you can capture anything, hear anything. Right. And, and you don't have to worry about Gracie. I know you don't see Gracie on, on us and I'm sure someone's going to question. Gracie, in the tent that we set up over here, she's already made herself a bed and she's fast asleep because she's had a long day. She's been traveling with us and filming with us, guys. We're out here in the forest and it's beautiful, and but we're working. We're working all day long and all night long almost. So we're not getting a lot of rest. We're doing a lot of work, we're doing a lot of filming this month. And I hope y'all really enjoy the film and really en and understand the effort that it's went into to do this. And uh, I hope y'all really do love the nature. I hope you love the campfire. I hope you, because there's a lot of campfire camping videos out right now. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting a camping video. Everybody wants to see a camping video. Then on top of that, not just camping videos. They want to scare it out of a wits. All right. And before the end of this 
video that might just happen because guys i don't know these woods right i'm gonna go off into the woods do my best and hope that i can make it 30 minutes and come back out and um, again that's what i'm gonna do too i'm gonna walk off into the woods she's gonna go one direction uh onto the west side of camp uh, there's a little pond here and she's gonna go to the west side i'm gonna go to the east side when she gets back tell you what we'll throw up a map right here and show them which directions we all went. Right. All right, sounds good. Um. All right, so I'm going to get ready to go out. Let me get my equipment up. So I have this set up for our R guys so it can see at night and hear. And, you know, again, the iPhone. I have my iPhone set up so you kind of catch the, the firelight, but the iPhone is giving a whole lot more light. We haven't turned any lanterns on yet. So the only real light that we have is by this fire. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's not great as far as being able to see around this. All right. I'll be back. All right. Wish me luck, guys. Make sure I'm recording. Jason, 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 recording Jason. Recording oh, oh, and oh. recording. So, let's go. <laughs> this should be pretty fun. Tell you what I will do. So that's the woods I'm looking at. Right there. Now she's going on a pretty good. Uh... That's the woods we're looking at right there. Yeah. She's so we're going to go out here. Walk. Into the woods. And see if there's anything out here in the woods with us. Are we ready guys? Are we ready to do this? I think I'm going to need some more hour. So let me turn this on. There we go. Uh oh, drop my phone. Try and do everything at once. All right. Now we're headed out into the woods. You can see where we're heading. I can't see anything. It's dark out here. But I'm hoping the camera is picking up more than what I'm picking up. So we're going to go out into the woods. Let's see if we can spend out here 30 minutes, guys. We're heading out toward the west end of the woods here. I mean, the west side of the campsite. And it is kind of creepy going out here by yourself. I have to say. Let me see if I can put some more light up. Creepy. And I hadn't freaked out, I'm still pretty calm. It's like it's dangerous and you know it's dangerous and it's freaky and you know it's freaky but at the same time you don't feel you don't feel threatened you understand like at the same time you don't feel like I can't explain it 
like you know it's dangerous and everything, but you don't feel it at the same time. And you do feel it. And I keep hearing things, and that's... Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to creep myself out. You can sense um, something following you. You can sense movement around you. I'm trying to face fears and I'm going to sit out here as long as I can do it, and I'm going to make it longer than I did at jail. And every time I do that, I'm going to do it a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer until I'm building myself up. I'm not going to push myself into being stressed out because then I'll make stupid mistakes. It sounded like, you'll see it on camera, where the camera is pointed straight uh, into that woods, to a section of the woods, and it sounded like something was walking toward me. And I couldn't, there was nothing, but it sounded like it was walking toward me. Did you hear that? Somebody had to hear that besides me. I'm sure that's on video. There's something back there. I'm gonna leave this here for a second. See so you guys see? creepy out here. You're doing good, guys. You made it 16 minutes. I'm going to try to make it as long as I can. I'm trying to maintain my crouching down. Just take from the forest, listening to the birds, I mean, to the crickets and the dogs. I haven't got rush or friends. And it's also, you got to think about the real animals that could hurt you out here. It's not just the critics. There are real things out here that can hurt you. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to try to make it 20 minutes at least. 
before I head back in. These woods do give you kind of a creepy feeling, but they're not, I don't feel that threatened at the same time, so it's kind of a counterbalance to that. I hear movement. Let's see if I can get that. This movement right there. Okay. All right, I'm headed to Kinsey Camp. This is creepy, guys. One of the things that I'm checking out that's on here is called the Teledega Jinx. And uh, it's a legend, I guess, that dates back before the Speedway. And I guess this is more related to uh, when Andrew Jackson was in this area, because if you remember the video we did on the uh, Battle of Talladega, the Battle of Talladega was uh, right after the Battle of Telesachi, which we did that video first. Uh, th this, this was a hard blow to the native people, and Andrew Jackson was... Um, he, he was set on, on getting rid of and extermination of uh, the native people. So when they were forced off of this land, it said that they put a curse. And what this curse did is uh, essentially make it so that no one could settle this land in peace. And we'll get into a little more of that. Um, But uh, I'm going to jump down and I'll, I'll let, so she can talk about these other items. But um, now, you know, Bigfoot, I, I think that Bigfoot's all over the United States. Uh, it, you know, I, I want you to comment below if you've, like, seen a Bigfoot or if you believe that the, the, the Bigfoot Sasquatch is an actual cryptid creature that exists on the face of this earth. Jennifer and I, we have some, some different thoughts on the Bigfoot. Um, we actually think that it's a very good possibility that they're part of what, what's known as the Nephilim. Uh, that's why they seem to have the ability to appear, disappear, and for the most part, when they see you in the woods, they don't bother with you the way that you would think that they would. You need to stoke up the fire a little bit. It's and it's, it's not chilly out, so the fire's just you know it's for the sake of having a fire tonight. Always nice to have fire. That's the onion scraps right there. We'll get them in here. Kind of spread it out, give us a little more light, a little less heat. Anyways, as I was saying, we kind of believe that the Bigfoot are part of the Nephilim. And uh, I, I think that you all know that I'm either brave or stupid, uh, whichever you want to look at it. I look at it as that I'm faithful, and I'm going to approach these creatures as if they are part of the Nephilim. I might be making a mistake, but if we see something, that's how we're going to approach it, and that's how I'm going to try and handle it. Uh, but another creature that's out here, and I'll share this story with you right now. It's called the Wampus Cat. And I'm going to put a cryptid picture up of the Wampus Cat. Uh, if you've ever watched the Mountain Monster series, uh, they had one where they had went after a Wampus Cat, and the animal that they were talking about is very, very real. When I was, uh, gosh, I guess I was 15 years old, 
and I went hunting in the woods for deer, and uh, this was during archery, and I was a pretty decent shot with bow, and this was up in Pennsylvania where uh, the small town that I grew up, Twin Rocks. And in Twin Rocks, there was a uh, school known as Big Ben, a Pantor and Down since. A friend of mine lived right across from the school, and there was a little alleyway or road that went up between his house and the school was. And you'd go on up, and the old black top to the school where the basketball court, you would cross that, and then you would be in the woods. And most of the woods in Pennsylvania where I was at was um, a state-owned land, so it was recreational for everyone to use to hunt. It wasn't uh, like in, in the south here, most of the land is private, and I really hate that. I mean, I'm glad that people can own the land, but I really hate that there's not uh, enough public hunting land. Regardless, I go up there. I'm doing really good. I, I had a deer stand, and I had come out of my deer stand that evening. And again, I'm 15 years old. I had a bow, and I had six broadhead arrows with me. I don't know why, I, I said if I, if I can't hit it in, if, if I can't use two arrows, I don't need any more than that. But I always just build my quiver, and that's what I went with. So I'm sitting there, and it's, it's you know, this is around the first of October. And it was a cool day, clouds were, uh, it, it was just super overcast. And I get out of my stand, because I didn't have a lot of luck. And the woods were just completely quiet that day, isn't it? Kind of was creeping me out because um, where I grew up, us kids, we lived in the woods. We would go through the woods. There were, you know, there were paths in the woods that would be a mile or more, and we would take those to go to our friend's house. We had friends that lived four or five miles from our homes, and we would just take our bikes and go back and forth. No big deal. Well, on that particular evening, I got out of my stand. I'm walking across this area where they had just clear cut. Um, the state had kind of wanted to do a little bit, so they clear cut this one area where a pipeline was going through, power line. And I sat right at the edge of that with my back against the woods. And as I'm sitting there, you know, just trying to watch, because I heard something in the woods, not that well, maybe there's a deer, maybe I have a chance of, of getting myself a little buck before I go home that night. And as I stooped down, this cat came out. And its shoulders were no less than, than three feet off the ground, but I'm going to say its front shoulders was closer to 40 inches off the ground. Its head was humongous. It was jet black like a panther. I mean, this, this thing looked like a a super leopard, like three times the size of a regular leopard. I mean, if, if it was any less than 450 pounds. <coughs> and I'm 15 years old. I'm scared out of my wits. I, I didn't know what to do. And the only thing I could do was sit there with my bow like this. My only defense was to maybe get one shot into it. And, uh, you know, back, back in my teenage days, I mean, I was, I was good enough that I could hit, like, you know, if you threw a plate up in the air, at, you know, 10 yards, I could, I could shoot that um, fairly accurately. Maybe not always the bullseye, but I could hit it. So I knew I could hit this thing at least one time. Whether I could damage it or not, I did not know. And as it came walking out of the woods, it was just a slow, lumbering walk. And it turned its head, and it looked directly at me. And it made eye contact. And I was very confused in my faith at that time. But I pulled every religion I knew together, and I was talking to God for a moment. And that cat, he saw, he, he was looking right at me, right in my eyes. And then he just turned his head the other way and walked on. 
like I was immaterial. And I'm glad I was immaterial. And I'll tell you what, I remember getting up when it, when it cleared and it was in the woods and I listened. I listened for five, ten minutes. I wanted to make sure I didn't hear anything coming up around me. I mean, when you grew up in the Appalachian Mountains, you understand the animals, you understand where you live, and you know the sounds in the woods at night. You know, you don't look out the windows much at night. You don't whistle in the woods at night. You don't hit on trees in the woods at night. You know, I sat there and I waited. And when I felt comfortable that this thing was gone, I never ran so fast in my life. And up until probably my 40s, I was, I, I, I was almost terrified to be in the woods in the evening alone. I really was. But that, that's the Wampus Cat story that I have. Uh, there's some stories from this area which I find unique because I thought the Wampus Cat was something that was limited to uh, the northern Appalachian Mountains, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Uh, but we're in the lower plateau areas of the, the Appalachian Mountains, the foothills. And they, there have been some recent sightings of those. I did good. Yes, you did. I did longer than I did in the jailhouse. And believe me, it's not as easy as you think. No, no, it isn't. It's not. Yeah, I'm not telling you what. You don't have to figure that out. Are you? Okay, I will. Something following me through the long drive, man. I had to get out of the long drive. Don't go into the long dog. It's not funny. You really don't go in the long dog. There's a reason they say that. Now I know. It does feel like the raptors are at you. Now I heard something walking behind me in the grass. In the long dog. I bet you if I set this here, yeah. it will not. Good luck, for real. Uh, be careful because the things that I experienced, Jay, um, you have to get out there and see yourself. I tell you what, guys. <sighs> It's something else being out here by yourself and camping and then um, walking in the woods by yourself or anything like that. It's beautiful, but it can be frightening if you're not used to it, if you're not used to camping by yourself. Now, I camped by myself before, but walking in the woods and just staying in the woods for no reason, I hadn't done that. Just walking out there. But, so he told you a couple of the stories. And then a couple more of the stories is, there was, um, he told you about the jinx that the Indians put on the land here. And something else that, I don't know if he talked to you about, but they were talking about ghost sightings and sightings of a lady in white. They were talking about there being ghosts out here. And how they'll hear walking up behind you or walking around you and guys when I was walking out through the woods I was hearing something walk follow me and then try to walk toward me I saw things at the edge of the woods so I know that that's a true thing they said they saw shadows and ghosts running in and out of the trees 
and he told you the story of the Wampus Cat. All of that's true. And he's headed that way into the woods right now. What we're going to do is take some time. I'll eat some cake. Walk around us, of course. I hear an owl. You can see everything around us. You see? There's the campsite. That's us set up. And I'll go get another, that light we around. We have good light. It's a, uh, it can be kind of creepy. Depends on how you look at it. Fire going. There's spirits around here. And graves around here that are unmarked. There are ghosts and a rumpus cat and a Bigfoot. There's been Bigfoot sightings. There's been orb sightings. They said there was a Wendigo. And what a Wendigo is, is a, uh, it's a creature that was a curse from the Native Americans. And you're cursed to be this creature when you engage in cannibalism. And it's been told and said that they're out here. So when you go down the list of what's out here in this forest, you're talking about um, the curse that the Native Americans put out here. The Wendigo, the ghost, the Wampus Cat, Bigfoot, orbs. I mean, the stuff. Uh oh. But I think that's the smoke making that go off. I'm going to have to move that. I keep hearing movement, but I don't see anything. I'm trying to get this to work without it being. Let me turn that off. Did you hear something over there too? Did you look at the same way? Is there something over there? What do you see? Huh? Let's see. Let's see if she sees something. What's over there, Gracie? You see something? Huh? I didn't see anything, guys, but it doesn't mean nothing's out. I told you I kept hearing something from over there. So there's no telling. She's looking around too. We can look around us if we want. There's some weird noises out there, guys. Let's try to see if we can figure out what that is. What do you hear, Gracie? You hear it? Is there some out there? And this would be a rim pod. I told you guys I was hearing something, feeling something. Look, it's out of the way and it's stuck up here. So, yep, we got the rim pod going off. So, there is. I told you we kept feeling something and hearing things. We're already hearing strange noises and hearing and feeling things. So, let's see if we get you anything. She keeps looking out. See this? Always pay attention to the animal. See where she's looking? Exactly where I came from. See those woods? That's where I did my own lawn challenge. And I told you that it felt creepy. That I felt like there was something out there. So, I think that's why. And Jay went that way. Into the woods. Yeah, that's pretty creepy out here sometimes. I told you it's weird. It's like it's creepy and safe at the same time. I don't know. It's an all around weird feeling. And my long challenge, I might not have lasted as long as he will. 
he'll beat me regardless. But still peepy nonetheless. Something that just don't feel right out here. And I hope he lasts longer than I do, I guess. Because I didn't last uh, 15, I lasted 15 minutes. You don't really want to set me back to the woods out here much. I could see that. I could see that being a feeling. So let's just hope he's okay because I don't know. I don't know what he's going to experience out there. It could be bad. It could be good. I really don't know. We'll see. I haven't seen his light for a while now, so I don't know. I know I hear something in the woods. Gracie's hearing it too. We're going to see. The woods do have a distinctly uh, eerie or strange feel to him out here. Nothing but you in nature. Oh, gotta fix my fire. Some people don't want to go in the woods by themselves and camp, be by themselves in the woods because it is an unknown. The woods are unknown to me, but Sometimes your mind can freak you out because you know the stories behind the place. I know the stories behind this place. It's scary. It's creepy. The cryptics, the ghosts, the Indian tales. And now my REM pod's going off again when I start talking about it. See, that's not creepy at all, right? No. So, I'm just saying, there could be anything out here. And I think knowing that, having the knowledge of this area and what's out here, it's kind of what creeps you out. You creep your own stuff out. You creep your own mind out by thinking about that stuff. And the rim polish is going off every now and then. But it's because, it, see, that goes along with what I was saying. It's creepy out here because you know the stories. You know how scary it is and how people have seen and heard things and experienced things. And the rim pie keeps going off lightly. That's insane. And I turned off the sensor, the wind and stuff, so it should be doing that. It's under that tent, so it shouldn't be getting that as the sensor. So if anything's touching it, it's lightly touching it, it's not heavily touching it. And when you count by water or pond, you hear stuff out of water. And there's frogs or stuff jumping around. Oh. Let's see. I can fix my fire here. Get my fire fixed on. Fog rolled off. Green pods going on. <sighs> fix my fire. I love camping, guys. I like being out in the woods. I don't mind camping by myself. I, I wouldn't want to be stuck in the woods by myself, but I don't mind camping by myself. Like if um, you were camping by yourself is one thing, being in the campground by yourself is one thing, that's fine. It's pretty safe. It's guarded. People know you're there. Just walking off into the woods by yourself is a different game. People don't know you're there. And anything can happen. That's a different game. And that could be totally scary. So, I see a light coming back this way. I don't know if it's been 30 minutes, but we'll see. Let me see how long it's been. Yeah, he probably made it 30 minutes. <clears throat> He said, I see a light coming back this way, so I think he's headed back this way. What's interesting? 
Is that my dog? Okay, I don't have a chair. Yeah, you do. It's under there. there. Yeah, I gotta reset that. So what was what was interesting? So believe it or not, guys, there was a point in time I couldn't even sit on one of these. Uh, I'll turn this out. I turn temperature off. Well, Give us a. You put is that new battery? Yes, I just put it in there. Okay. Go ahead. Well, see if any of this kind of compares to what you were saying. The bugs were horrible. Yep. Okay, so we so got that far, part. So far, so good. Well, when I, I first went, it took me a while to kind of get myself organized how I'm holding everything. Um, but we went down to around the pond. Mm -hmm. I walked all the way down the pond. And when we got almost to the end literally sounded like the water was boiling for a few seconds in this one spot it was like blah, 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 you know all that oh wow and, and you know so i'm, I'm shining my lawn trying to see down in there and it just quits as soon as i start looking it just quits hmm. you know and i'm telling everybody well that's kind of freaky but we're gonna keep going so I go to the end, and there's really no trails that go deep, like, into the woods. It's all kind of like ridge road type stuff. And what I mean is, it's just a dirt road that goes to the middle of the woods. Like, if you're going to find Bigfoot or hit him with your car, that's the road you're going to do it. And, you know, I'm walking, there's a, a, a mountain mm -hmm. bank that goes up one side. And going up there, there's one spot, it felt really creepy for a while. So I turned on the... Uh, 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 oh, what is it? The Ghost Tube Seer. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're looking at the Ghost Tube Seer app. This one picture came out. was just disturbing, like earth, a bunch of worms or something. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. It was a bunch of worms or something. And we're walking, and then another picture came up. It was really weird because it looked like a 1942 um, truck. It had like a military type security container on the back. Really? And then I suggested, it, it made me instantly think that, you know, because we, we've had several theories on the mm -hmm. cryptids. And I told everybody about one of the theories that we had. They're a result of a military experiment. Right. You know, and I, I explained, you know, the, the, the Red Skull comics, World War II, all of those things. That was based on real things the Germans and Americans were doing. They were trying to build a super soldier by mixing human DNA with animal DNA. And then they dumped them in the woods. Right, and then, then, and a lot of it was done in the Appalachian Mountains. Yes. Hidden away in these little bases. And you're right, then they just abandoned it. Right, so and it, they let those creatures loose in the woods. You know, and so, how do we know that's not what it's some like of Jurassic these creatures Park. are? Something survived. Obviously. Well, and then to, to further that, a World War II submarine came up on the screen next. So this all happened during World War II. That's when everybody was and doing those is, weird and, experiments. And, that, and I didn't start getting those pictures until I started asking about the cryptids in the area. Yeah. So that led me to that. All right, so um, then we went ahead and um, I did, uh, you know, five, eight minutes. I can't remember. We'll know after we watch the video. But I just did a total lights out. Um, Oh, you did more than I did then. Yeah, oh. better. We did total lights out. I run the uh, uh, dashboard. We were getting some real uh, interesting. You're going to enjoy watching the video when, when we get this made. Um, and we did that for a while. Nothing concrete. All it kept telling me is that there's three spirits around me. Three. Three spirits around me. Three. That's it? Yes. Um, I started to talk a little bit about Andrew Jackson and uh, Talladega Jinx. I, I can't tell if that was... I'll have to wait to listen. But from my impression, that was not a good discussion to be having. I know. Because, see, that's weird that happened to you because while you were gone, I was telling stories about it. And I said, I know that he's already told you about the Talladega Jinx and that, that these, these air, this land is cursed by the Native Americans. 
And then when I said that, the rim powder went off. Wow. Well, uh, on the on the dashboard, on the, the part that gives words, the ovalist section, it said dog. And then on the radio, it said Gracie. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. Well, I, I, I instructed them that they're not allowed to touch Gracie. They can, you know. Is that weird? I, when did that happen about... Uh, Almost about seven to ten minutes before you came this way. Something like that, yeah, I would say. Well, I, I wonder if it's the same time that she got alerted to something right there. We both heard it at the same time, but she looked first. And I took my camera and I showed her because she bent her head all the way around the chair like that. And she was glaring into the woods. I got chill bumps. Like, I seriously got chill bumps. Because that come across your, your thing. Yeah. And I'm thinking... It's going to be at the same time that it was, she was looking straight into the woods where I said that thing was walking toward me. Wow. And I took the camera and said, look, guys, I do pay attention to the animals found. <coughs> and I went down to where her head, I showed where her head was facing, right? And then I turned my camera that way. That's supposed to be off. Your notifications. I'll tell you one more on my way back. I'll, I won't even make you wait. So I'm coming back and I start talking about the splash again because I heard it yeah. one more time. I heard a lot of splashing right here. Yeah, go ahead. I heard it one more time. Yeah. Right, and, it, and as soon as I said that, the EMF meter went all the way to 99. With the splashing? Yes. EMF meter was at 99. It started, it was the first time tonight it started bouncing. And I was hearing things in the water too. Weird. Like, and then sounds. I was asking if there's a cryptid in the water. Yeah. The radio went silent for a second. Hmm. I'm just running the L. As possible to see if you can come through. Did you hear that? Huh? We come. Hi, there. Oh. That one said, get out. I got chill bumps. Home ownership. Home ownership? Well, this is not home ownership. And if you're trying to take home ownership. Consecrated. Is this consecrated ground? What is that? No. Because the ramp pod. Is someone around the count? What? Something said it can't come in. And right. that's right, you cannot come into camp. I told you, it's just for the night. Oh. Who's around the count? My baby. My baby. Who's your baby? Who's your baby? What's your baby's name? Jeremy. Ooh, I heard that too. I got chill bumps. What's Jeremy's last name? Or does Jeremy have a last name? They're trying to come through. Can you tell me your name? What's your name? What? Wilford?
I think I heard Gilman. Gilman. John. Okay, Gilman, John. Could one of you tell us? Is there something in the water? Is there a cryptid in the water? Or near the water? What was that noise, that bubbling noise that I heard when I was walking? You're in trouble. Oh. Why am I in trouble? Or who's in trouble? Who is in trouble? Are we in trouble? What was in the woods with me? We're in big trouble. Who's in big trouble? You too. You sat on the baby. Is there something in the water? What? My heart. My heart. Does the water give you energy? No, we're not summoning anything. What's in the woods? I thought I heard Nepalum. Then I heard forgive me. I hurt someone. Oh, is that why your spirit's still wandering? What is your name? Okay. Fourteen or fourteen? Did you? Did you? How many people did you hurt? Watch this. Watch what? Water. Is there something in the water? Where's your flashlight? It's right there. Where? Right beside you. I'm not in trouble. You're in trouble. Big trouble again. Is Jennifer in big trouble or is Jay in big trouble? Who's in big trouble? Okay, let's start this again. When I was in, the, me first, okay. When I was in the woods, who was walking beside me, behind me? Is there something in the woods around here? Three again. So I want you to tell me about the um, Cherokee Jeeps. Are there Wendigo here? What?
Are there Wendigo here? Is there an open portal in this forest? Too much. Too much. Are there Native Americans here? For real? Yeah. There's, There's more. more. A hundred. Are there shapeshifters in the forest? Soldiers. Soldiers. I got chill months. Civil War soldiers? Or War of uh, Are there 1813? Indian the Indian War? Go on now. Is it the war between the Creek and the Cherokee or between the Indians and the native and the uh, white men? White men. White men. Oh, I got chill bump skulls. So the spirits that roam here from the Native Americans are the result after Andrew Jackson came through here and cleared the land, was moving the Indians out. You perceive like. So are they the residing spirits after of the, of the Native Americans who died? Are they buried around here where we're at? Did the Native Americans put a curse on the land? Massacre something. Did they put a curse on the land when they got massacred? Because of what the white men were doing? Probably. Jesse. I heard Jesse clear. Jen. So, are there Wendigos in the forest? What? There is. Are Wendigos a result of people uh, participating in cannibalism? Are there Bigfoot in the forest? I'm just gonna assume that someone down there. He did, that's awesome. Okay. I will be. Are there human spirits residing around the forest? You're right. Are there missing people still here in the forest? What is residing around this area right here? Is there something in the water? Yeah, they are. What's in the water? Tell me the name of the cryptic in the water. It's transit. So does that mean it, tra it changes 
Shaitan. Or does that mean that it is only here for a little while and then it goes somewhere else? Does it travel the Appalachians? That was a growl. Whoa, wait, wait. Make a noise again. I heard you already. Make a noise again. So they were answering the questions, God. They were saying. The stuff out here and stuff from the um, Native American town where they were clearing them out of here. I'm telling you, this, this is definitely one of the most haunted forests in the South. The, 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 the history of the battles, not from just the, the, the Indians, but the Civil War, everything that came through this area. And the blood that's in this ground, guys, I'm telling you. From the Native Americans alone. I'm sure that blood cries out. So. My understanding with this is that the Native Americans that were here, the, the Creek Indian groups that were here, opened up essentially a portal to the other world. Yeah. And through the other world, what we would call, you know, the demon side of things, entities and beings could come through, but they're limited to this forest. This camp around is beautiful. These people are great. It is quiet, pleasant, the pond is beautiful, the campsite is beautiful, the porta potty is clean, guys, and that's an A plus for me. I'm telling you, this whole campground is beautiful. It's a great experience here, and everybody needs, if they come out to Talladega Forest, try to come by Bohemia, uh, Bohemia Campground and make a reservation to come out here and stay, and stay by the pond back here. It's beautiful, guys. You're going to love it. But hey, and they got a rowboat, and they got a paddle boat, and what else was she saying? You could swim, you could fish. Well, one thing that, that I was um, really noticing, though, was this right here, this was, it was $35. Okay. That's cheap. Which, yeah, I mean, and, and that's, uh, you can have, you know, I think it's eight people in your campsite at that price. Nice. I'll grab her and head that way. Hey, Grace, you want to go to bed? Yeah. Huh? You want to go to bed, big girl? I know, you're so tired. We keep waking you up every time. Every time. Every time.